um, you know, we, with several uh, uh, expiring contracts, we had roster spots open, available, uh, needs to be addressed. And uh, we felt, you know, we addressed, uh, you know, positionally some, some needs. We needed simply to add players to, to obviously fill out a roster, but uh, address some needs, an important need at center and Andrew Kopp, um, uh, right hand shot forward in, in, uh, in David Perron and um, kind of a pleasant surprise in, in uh, what we consider, uh, you know, a scoring winger in uh, Dominic Kubalik, uh, adding some defensemen that we think will improve, help us, uh, 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 our special teams, in particular our penalty killing, and then defensively five on five as well. So uh, these are all areas we talked about in the, in the spring, um, that areas we needed to improve upon. And like I said, with, our, with some of our contracts expiring and holes in our roster, we're in a position to uh, to bring in some new faces and, and players we think address some of these needs. You had spoken at the end of the season about how the team needed to be better defensively. How important was it to give Derek the pieces to try to make that happen? Well, um, like ultimately, you need good players to win games and you need, you know, you need good players to, to be good offensively and defensively. It all comes down to that. And, uh, it's up to up to the co the coach the coaching staff to try to maximize the talent they have and find a way to get the uh, be most efficient in all areas with the players that we have. So, you know, for you know for for our coaching staff, in order to to uh, you know, try and improve in these areas, we you know we need better play from our team and uh, um, whether that's our returning players maturing, uh, getting a one year. Uh, more experience and then bringing in some new faces that maybe are, are more um, adapt in those roles. And lastly, just with the development camp, having been here this week, you know, you, you talked last, or you've talked about how you weren't sure going into last season, where is Lucas Raymond at and maybe a little more confidence in or at cyber. How would you rate uh, Simon Edmondson's preparedness and, you know, the benefit of him having, going to work world juniors right before coming to camp. Yeah. Well, that term, all these experiences, I think are fantastic for players to go into these world junior tournaments. Uh, um, they're great experiences individually for them, but also in the development as, as hockey players playing in, in big games and do or die games and under the pressure, I think is great. I think this tournament in August, uh, I think, uh, Actually, you look at the positive. What a better way to prepare yourself for a for a training camp, <laughs> playing in in a, a really a high uh, a high, highly important tournament, a highly competitive tournament. So I see it kind of as a positive. Um, you know, comparing his situation to maybe uh, Moritz's a year ago, uh, Moritz had a year in the American League and one and a year in the Swedish uh, Hockey League. You know, Simon is a year younger and just coming one year out of the Swedish Hockey League. So just, you know, a, a year less experience, a year younger, um, you know, and I, we'll see how he does. But, you know, seeing him here in the development camp, he's uh, he's obviously very tall. He's very, he's, he's very thick. It's actually the first time I've gotten to meet him in person since drafting him. He's thicker than I expected, which is in a good way. He looks very strong. Um, his skating, you know, his skating is, is excellent. Uh, so I'm, you know, we're optimistic. We'll give him, you know, we'll give him an opportunity and if he's ready to play and play a regular role, um, uh, that would be great for us. And, you know, we'll just kind of let the whole thing play itself out, but the world juniors will be uh, a, a great stepping stone coming into training camp to try and, you know, make a good impression and, and earn a spot on the team. One last one for me, you've said numerous times, you know, you're not going to put up a, a date on a playoffs or anything um do you allow yourself to think about playoffs a little bit more now with, with the changes you've implemented uh no my approach like uh i guess you know what i tried to do was try and address some areas improve our team and or acquire some players or add some players that i think would you know uh improve our team and and today you know it's it's what is it july 14th I think we're better. I think we've improved the team, but it's got. We got to go on the ice in September and then play in in, in October. So um, I think we've addressed some needs. I'm hoping we're a better team. I think we're progressing slowly in in this rebuilding of the Red Wings. Um, and you know, are, are are we good enough to make the playoffs next year? I, I don't know. Um, I'm hopeful that our you know uh, we'll be 
we'll, 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 we'll score more goals. We'll give up fewer goals. I'm hoping our power play will be a little bit better. Our penalty killing is a little bit better. Our goals against is a little bit better. And that pushes us, you know, uh, higher up the standing. So time will tell. I'm, I'm optimistic that we're, 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 progressing but my you know kind of the plan uh, really hasn't changed and kind of sticking with what uh, what I intend to do and keep our younger guys and be patient with them keep our draft picks and and continue to go to build this way thank you Steve Max Boltman hey Steve as we've talked to a lot of these guys the last couple of days a lot of them have kind of used the phrase up and coming and ready to take the next step I was just curious how much of your pitch to these guys was was that or is that something that they kind of have just concluded on their own well you know the guys that i talked to were they're pretty astute like they they kind of do their homework uh well they do do their homework they look at and they should they look at uh, one you know the team where, where we are what their role on the team is going to be and you know everything that's important to them they look into so a lot of it you know the fact that you know yeah i still consider them young but you know you have the dylan larkin tyler bertuzzi's and then you know, Lucas Raymond, uh, Cider come and create a little bit of excitement, add to our team. And, you know, with I'm, I'm kind of looking up to my left at, at our depth chart here. Um, you know, the, the Joe Valenos, the Dinas, we've got a, uh, like there's there's a, a core of young players that, that potentially um, has a chance to be a pretty good team one day and the players recognize it. And there's, there's uh, a definite need in the role, like for an Andrew Kopp, for example, to, to have an impact uh, on and off the ice in a leadership role um, with a group of young players that uh, uh, you know hopefully is on the rise. It's I think that you know is, was attractive to some of the players. And then I remember when you talked about improving the defense at the start of the offseason, you kind of made a point that it wasn't just going to be about defensemen. Is Perron, you know, obviously he can score a lot of goals, but coming from a situation in St. Louis, like how much does he help the team defense? You think? Well, one like. Uh, he's a pretty competitive guy. I like, we like the right shot. Um, a natural, uh, winger with the right shot, very good on the power play. He's been through a lot of playoff runs. He's a very experienced player, excelled in the playoffs that, you know, played on St. Louis's Stanley cup team. So, um, he just, he just, he really fills a need for us. I like the veteran leadership, uh, talking to people in St. Louis, our players that, uh, uh, that played with him there in St. Louis as well. I think he can provide a lot for us, but mostly, you know, getting a right winger or the right shot right winger really fills a need. And I think it helps us with another play that'll a player that will help our par. And then Sherratt, obviously probably gets slot next to Cider or Heronic there. What, what can he do for those two young righties? Well, uh, you know, you mentioned, uh, you know, Sherratt, uh, Ollie Matt as well on the left side. Um, uh, kind of defense first defenders, you know, a defenseman, bigger bodies uh, uh, get in the way, uh, you know, kind of hard to play against both. I think, I don't know what uh, uh, Derek will ultimately decide, but I would expect, uh, I would expect you know, those two guys to play with Moritz and Phillip to be good compliments for them. Um, you know, I think they're big guys. They have good length. They defend pretty well, can block shots and, and are big bodies that are a little harder to play against. So I think they, they complement the two young guys on the right. And then last thing, are, are you, do you feel like you're just about done here or is there more in your mind that you're looking to get done? Uh, done, uh, you know, I, I, I don't, we've got a lot of players right now. One, um, you know, I don't, I don't know that I would, you know, look to, to uh, do anything more in free agency. I don't have a blockbuster in the works or anything like that for y'all. Um, I think we get through the free agency here and, you know, kind of explore, you know, some teams that have to make moves in light of what's happened. Um, I'd certainly, you know, I think it's important to, to, you know, kind of keep looking around to keep communicating with other teams around the league to see if there is any, any, you know, potential fit. Uh, uh, but uh, I don't see us being, you know, I don't expect to, you know, I wouldn't expect me to announce any, signings of future signings we got you know 8d under contract with jake wallman yet to be signed and we'll get that done we've got uh uh depending on where you want to slot guys uh even 15 forwards with robbie fabry will you know uh be out to start the season as well um kind of want to see how things play out with our group i'm pretty content right now to 
to go into uh, training camp with the group that we have. Um, but I would also, you know, I wouldn't be doing my job if I wasn't exploring if there's any other opportunities out there via trade or, you know, what I wouldn't want to do is go and sign another free agent, a uh, you know, significant free agent and put myself in a position where I've, I have to trade somebody for whatever reason, because that's not a good time to do it. So, uh, but I'm always looking at ways to, to try and get better. Thank you. Yep. Ansar Khan. Yeah. Hi, Steve. Uh, you know, uh, you added some size and some grit with guys like Sherat and, and Peron. Uh, you mentioned wanting to be harder to play against. How much of an emphasis was that? Well, um, yeah, I think it's important for whether it's the new players that can't come in um, or our, our current team, harder to play against isn't necessarily in, in running guys through the glass or anything. It's, it's being more dogged on the puck, being uh, more responsible with the puck, uh, being tighter defensively, more diligent defensively, uh, competing harder. So, um, you know, Sherratt's a big body. Matt is a big body. Um, even uh, Kubalik's an offensive player, but like he's a big, big, strong guy. So, um, we want to be harder to play against because we're, we're better defensively. We're more competitive. Um, and, and even, you know, we, we have more depth up front that uh, we can match up better against whether it's strong offensive teams or strong defensive teams. Uh, you added a couple of uh, cup winners in, in Mata and, and Peron and some guys with extensive playoff experience. How much can that help uh, just the influence uh, on a young team? Well, I, I, I think, um, you know, it, it, I think guys that have been in good programs that, that have been successful, that have played in the league a long time, they learn a lot throughout their career from playing, playing with good players, playing for good coaches, um, and about the, the day-to-day habits, the things you need to do to be successful and remain in the league. So I think they can, I believe they really have a positive influence. I think you talk to any player that came into the league at 19, 18, 19, or 20, the things they learn throughout their career, um, good things, uh, and the guys that survive and, and perform well, they've learned to be pros. They learn the good habits. They know what it's, uh, you know, what good teams do, the characteristics of good teams, what are the characteristics good teams have, um, the, you know, how you fit into a team and how you lead and how you conduct yourself. So I think that's all uh, things that can be beneficial to to our team, bringing these guys in there. Good people, good character people, and good hockey players as well. Thanks, Steve. John Neal. Hey, Steve. Uh, just wondering, when did you start to zero in on, on COP and why, I guess, in your mind? And obviously, you've been pretty conservative with term, but here's one that gets five years, et cetera. Yeah, well, um, you know, there was a, a small group of centermen um, that were free agents this year. Uh, th- that we had some interest in what, what we like about Andrew um, is, you know, he could, he, one, he is a centerman. He's 28 years of age. Um, uh, he's a very good athlete. Uh, he's very versatile. If you watched him this year with Winnipeg, you watched him when he went to the Rangers, he's playing center, he's playing the wing. He can, he can play on the power play. We watch him for, uh, against us here in Detroit playing in the bumper in the middle on the power play plays on the penalty kill. He's a good face-off man. So he's very versatile. Um, and at the age of 28, I'm comfortable offering a player a five-year contract. We think he's a good athlete. We know he's a good athlete. We, we believe he takes real good care of himself. He's very professional. So at the age of 28, giving the guy a five-year contract, um, I wasn't a concern for him. And then obviously you'll have a lot of new faces come training camp. You also have a new coaching staff. Does that in a way make things a little easier to sort of integrate all this and, and get this thing rolling out of the gate. Uh, having a new coaching staff? Just, you know, it's sort of a fresh start for everybody. So these new guys, it's not like they're trying to fit into a, an old system, if you will. <laughs> um, yeah, uh, well, I, you know, there's a bunch of, we're going to have six or seven new faces in the lineup on opening night, potentially. Uh, new coaching staff, uh, Derek will do things, uh, you know, the way he wants to, uh, different than our, uh, I would, you know, I think you'll have different systems. If you want to call them that different way of playing, he might have different line combinations. Our players, our, our current players, their roles might change a bit, you know, whether 
they might be, uh, you know, playing with different line mates. They're, they'll, they're, we're going to play a different way. You know, I've talked to Derek uh, through the hiring process about his thoughts on, on defensive zone coverages, uh, neutral zone coverages, how you play off uh, face-offs offensively, defensively, and, uh, you know, power play structures and things like that. So it's going to be an adjustment for our players, not only because we have a new coach who may want to use guys in a different way, and 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 play a different way but you'll have a lot of new faces that that'll be in the lineup and might be better might make us a better te- team by playing in a spot some of our uh, uh uh existing players were used to playing in so there is an adjustment for sure um you know we you know the uh, training camp is with 20 23 days long we've been gonna, there's there's good and bad to playing eight preseason games yeah eight preseason games i think that's the a really good way to, to, to get comfortable within a system. Um, you know, we'll try to get as many practices as we can to get familiar with the way the coaching staff wants to play. Um, it'll take some time. You know, I'm, I'm hopeful that we get off to a good start, obviously, but it, you know, this it could take a little time for it, everything to get sorted out and, and, you know, uh, all the new faces to gel together. So we'll see how it goes, but I think there'll be a lot of excitement. I'm expecting our players uh, to come into training camp uh, um, uh, a little bit um, uh, like the, 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 a lot of guys have something to prove here. They got, you know, there's competition for ice time. There's competition for jobs on the team. So I'm hoping this, uh, you know, the, the change in the coaching staff, I'm hoping with the additions of the new players that, that all of our guys uh, are coming ready to go, that it's important they make a good first impression because, they're going to want that because the coach is going to have to make decisions on uh, on opening night as to who's in the lineup and who's playing in all the different situations. And along those lines, the last one for me, when you do look at that depth chart up there to your left, how much better do you feel about it just in terms of depth, for lack of a better word? Well, I, th- I think we do have more depth. Um, you know, I, for the most part, I think every team, you know, I, I, I like I'm, I'm – I'm cautiously or nervously optimistic. I think we're, we have more depth. I think we're a little bit, uh, we, we can match up a little bit against other teams. Um, um, and I just keep my fingers crossed that, 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 that it plays out that way. So, um, yeah, I do. Again, I do think we have more depth with the addition of uh, Peron, Kopp, Kubalik. I think we have a chance to, you know, put out two pretty good uh, right. power play units. Um, I think we have a little bit more, you know, ability uh even just andrew cop's uh uh ability to win face-offs will help us uh on the penalty kill just simply you win more face-offs the likelihood you get out of the zone quicker the other team spending less time in your offensive zone so um again i uh i think we have more depth uh, i think we're deeper on the blue line we're a little bit younger we're a little heavier um you know we'll see how simon edmondson does uh you know, can Moritz take another step a little bit? Uh, Philip Peronic, we're counting on to take another step. And hopefully the veterans that we've signed, uh, um, you know, uh, help them and take that step, I guess. Thanks, Steve. Yep. Kevin Allen. Yeah, Steve, thanks for doing this. Um, yep. not, not only did you uh, sign a bunch of free agents, but you sort of, uh, for the back of a better term, out-recruited some contenders for some of your players that they were interested in as well. Is that a good sign that players are looking at your team now and seeing that they believe you're headed in the right direction? Uh, so maybe it'll help you over the next couple of years as you add players. Um, yeah, again, you know, it's more of a question probably for the players that we sign, um, Kevin, but like, I think it's encouraging that we are able to, um, you know, are able to bring play, able to sign players that they're, they're, you know, excited to come here. Their genuine interest, uh, in coming here, they you know, weren't necessarily, I guess it's debatable, but weren't, you know, necessarily everyone looking for seven years and as much money as they could get. They were willing to work with us on the contracts to come in. So, um, you know, we've got a lot of work to do. I, I, you know, here we've got a lot of improving left to do, but, uh, you know, the new players coming in and with uh, with our, our, our small nucleus of, of uh, remaining players, the young kids coming in, I, I think we're trending in the right direction, but I would just guard uh, uh, that we've still got a lot of work to do and we'll see how this season plays out uh, and to kind of gauge where we are. It's a lot of changes, a lot of new faces, all done with obviously good intentions and with the hope that we're going to be better 
uh, not only this year, but in a position to keep improving the team moving forward as well. It just, you know, it's another step, I think, in the process. But I, uh, I was encouraged with the fact that, uh, you know, these players have options. You'd have to ask them and maybe I get a chance to sit down with them uh, uh, to pick their brain a little bit on uh, what other options they had. What were they thinking? Um, I assume they all had different options. I'm, I'm encouraged by the fact that we were able to, to, to bring them in and, uh, um, you know, hopefully this works out well, but uh, I'm definitely encouraged by it, the ability to, you know, that, or the willingness of some of the guys to come and play. And see, once your team is labeled as a rebuilding team, there's always an expectation that there's a possibility of rookies making the team. You've been pretty consistent in saying that a rookie's got to earn his way on and that you're not going to hold a place for one. But when you look at the depth that you've added yesterday, did it suddenly become a lot harder to make this team if you're a, a rookie coming into training camp? Uh, uh, this season yeah um you know another way we certainly could have gone is just to leave roster spots open and let the you know let who uh our younger players or players that we had under contract just come in and and uh and put them on the team um i don't uh, obviously i chose not to do that i just like hey if, if we come in and we have too many good players wouldn't that be a great problem to have you know we'll figure it out at that point uh, I'd rather have our young guys, you know, progress, you know, go from the America, go from junior hockey to the American league, to the NHL, or if they're good enough, right to the NHL or, or work to work their way through the steps, as opposed to putting them in the NHL uh, because we've just decided that they're going there. And then, you know, at Christmas or middle of November, geez, we're not very good. Uh, they're struggling and have to send them down. It's not a really good approach not good for the team and it's not good for the individual and certainly we're not going to hold guys back if our young guys are really good we're in a position we'll we'll figure it out we'll create a spot for them that's that's never an issue having having too many good players is, is not a problem but it's not just for the younger players again uh, the, the whole roster like if they guys have to know like hey like there's competition now. I've got to, I've got to earn my ice time. I got to earn my spot on the rosters. There's no question. There's a group of guys. They're on the team, and we know that for the most part, what that group is. They're going to be here, and they're expected to come into training camp in tip-top shape and lead the way. Um, but having said that, they're not necessarily going to be first over the boards in any situation because I think we have more players in here that can that that will be options for the coaching staff and our younger players. I tell them, guys have a good summer, uh, make sure you have a good training camp, much like uh, Lucas Raymond. We didn't really know what to expect for Lucas last year. Uh, we kind of thought he would start in the American League. He played well, as you recall, up in Traverse City. Then he came and played well through the preseason and and he started the year and remained there throughout it. And uh, that would be the same thing for any of our young guys. If they're going to make us better and they're going to play a regular role, we'll figure it out. Thanks, Steve. Yep. John Warwell. Hey, Steve, uh, John Morrow with the Associated Press uh, in Buffalo, Larry's off, but um, um, I was wanted to ask you about the salary cap, and, and I mean, a million-dollar rise of the salary cap isn't much, but, and you happen to be on the other end of most teams, you know, given their cap, cap situations. How much of an effect do you think it had on yesterday, and, and especially when it comes to some of the bigger names, name players still, you know, being on, on the, you know, unsigned at this point? Yeah, um, well, I think uh, if you look around the league, the really good teams, um, they simply, they had to make decisions not, not based, based on, um, you know, they simply had to get, get under the cap and they had to make decisions between players that they would love to keep. Uh, they couldn't afford them. So um, uh, the cap, I think, has, 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 has been tough. The really good teams weren't, it's hard for them to add. It's hard for them just to stay the same. And you, you watch a lot of guys get traded just for salary cap reasons. And then, um, you know, at the other end of the spectrum, you have some teams that are rebuilding that are, are, are taking a more conservative approach and just and not, you know, doing what they require to get to, to, the, to the floor and um, um, are prepared just to be patient and acquire more draft picks and, uh, and are at a, just a different stage. So between those two ends, I think there's, you know, it's hard for, for some of the free, you know, for everybody to find spots, you know, it really is. And uh, I think that's, uh, I haven't really been busy with some other things this morning here, but I don't, I don't know if there's been any major signings today, but I just, there's limited spots for, 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 you know, big money, long-term contracts. 
And just as a follow up, and I yeah, I, uh, Andre Palat was the only guy who's who still who signed, and he did that late last night. But just as a follow up, just how does your cap situation, knowing knowing you have an edge on other teams when it comes to being able to spend, how does that does that alter your approach, or or maybe how, how, does it change your approach, or, or provide you some kind of an know philosophy on, on, on how to go after or target free agents that you might want well um you know for us we we chose not to resign we traded some players at the deadline last year and we chose not to uh sign some more guys so i guess we were in a position to to uh uh add players through free agency what what just having the cap space having uh the roster spots i did like a you know, everybody will have varying opinions on whether we got value or didn't get value in the signings that we did or every signing that goes around on the league. What we, you know, we tried to um, identify players that, that uh, um, fit what we we're trying to do, would help us, the needs that we had. Uh, we tried to look at their age um, and the term and the dollar value of the contracts and, and decide what we wanted to do. Um, so again, I just, you know, in our situation, you know, three years ago in the same situation, somewhat, I, I chose not to spend a lot of money or go out and sign a lot of players we were building. Now we're, you know, year four of it, we have roster spots, we have cap space, there were players there that we felt we felt would help us um, and not, not really deviate from what we're trying to do, but also, you know, not necessarily, again, give maximum term and maximum dollar to players. So, uh, um, you know, I just think, you know, with uh, the cap, the situation the last couple of years, um, it has had an effect on what some teams can do and some teams want to do. Thank you. Ted Colfin. Hey, Steve, was Dominic Kubalik almost like a bonus for you guys in a way? I mean, he probably, you guys didn't even know he, could, he was going to be on the market here until a few days ago. I mean, what does yeah. he bring to the table? Well, um, he, he's got good sight. You know, uh, uh, we've seen him a lot, obviously, playing Chicago a little, you know, quite a bit, quite a bit during the, uh, the, 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 the pandemic season. Um, he's big. He can skate. He's got a great shot. Um, you know, and, and, and the contract we think is very reasonable. Um, mm -hmm. So I think it's, it's a guy that has, uh, has a lot of upside, a very reasonable contract. It's another player um, that gives us more, uh, like more scoring depth. Um, so, yeah, it was, you know, you, you kind of like you read these things as you're getting closer, who's getting QO'd, not when there was a sense that Dominic might not get QO'd. And as it turned out, it didn't. So, we reached out to him really through Yuri uh, Fisher, um, you know, uh, and he expressed an interest in coming. So we were, we were pleased, you know, very pleased. You know, I think it's a very, you know, um, very reasonable contract, and you know, gives him an opportunity to, to kind of show, you know, do his thing and and perform well, and and then and we go from there. Uh, forgive me, the dog was barking up a storm when he brought it up. Is Fabry not going to be? quite ready yeah. for, for yeah, camp for yeah, the start of the yeah. season yeah Robbie won't be ready it's uh he won't be ready to start the season I don't have an exact date for you um probably be able to do that you know in September but yeah he won't be ready Jake Wallman and, and Robbie won't be ready to start the season forgive me what, what what's did Jake have surgery too Jake, Jake had uh shoulder surgery yes at the end of the season Gotcha. All right. Thanks for this. They'll both be fine and ready, but it just won't be at the start of the season. That's good. Thanks, Steve. Yeah. Last question, Art Redner. Hi, Steve. Um, I, I want to ask you this question and put it kind of in a context that, you know, the moves that you made yesterday, um, was this more of a message or people are reading into it that the rebuild is taking the next step? I know you've kind of answered it, but was this a message to current Red Wing players that have been here that the infancy stage or the foundation is laid for this rebuild. It's time for everybody to up their game. Um, not really, Art. Like I, I like, you know, first like uh, like guys like Dylan, uh, uh, Tyler, um, you know, to some extent, Philip Peronic. I look up uh, guys that have been here for you know since I've since I've been with the Wings. That 
like it's been tough on them, you know, like they're, they're grinding it out. They've been great, uh, positive guys and, and understand what we're doing. Um, and, you know, so really, you know, it's simply this, like we had roster spots open, we have cap space and, 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 um, and we got to fill those spots. Let's decide how we fill them. Uh, you know, let's decide how much money we want to spend and then how much money we want to spend on any particular player and put really put the best team we can on the ice. Um, and so that's what we did. And I think that, you know, uh, we're trying to improve my message to, to the players, I guess, would be just, look, we are, we are improving. Um, we think the moves we made this summer are, are, are going to make us a better team. Our expectation is to be better. And, and for all of our guys, uh, you know what, uh, there's better players around you. Our expectations are going up and we're counting on everybody to improve. So, um, you know, again, the, the message uh, uh, doesn't, uh, or the, the, the plan really hasn't changed as contracts, contracts have expired of roster spots open. We're going to continue to move our younger players in and, and, and try to, to fill in uh, our roster, or complete our roster, improve our team with free agents that uh, um, either are going to help us in the short term or are going to continue to be here as we get better. Um, development camp just concluded th this afternoon or right around noontime, four games that I thought were highly entertaining. Uh, your initial thoughts maybe on this development camp uh, and uh, did anybody surprise you or stand out? Um, well, first of all, I thought it was a, like a, an excellent camp, really got a chance to watch a lot of it all, uh, apart from yesterday. Um, I thought Danny Cleary and, and our entire staff, uh, um, did a really good job, uh, in preparing it and organizing the camp The feedback, uh, in watching the players, they seem to really enjoy all the different aspects of, of the, of the week, uh, the different things that were provided to them. Um, um, you know, I was, I. I'm not going to really point to any individual player, but I was really pleased with, with the, the group as a whole. Um, you know, some of the, you know, the, their kids really, and some of them, they're a lot of them, actually their first development camp, cause we haven't had one for three years, but you expect the, the younger ones, the 17, 18 year olds to, that they've got uh, in relation to the 22 or 23 year olds, a little bit more work to do in developing as they mature. But, Overall, I was very happy and uh, how things went, the attitude of the players and uh, and the commitment they made and the enthusiasm they showed out there. Steve, I did not have the opportunity to uh, be at the draft and ask you this question. And you did make a deal with me, if you remember, oh, that God. you would answer this question after the draft. So I'm looking at it, all things equal, goalie, defenseman, forward, you're up to bat. You had you took four centers, three left wings, two D men, uh, one left handed, one right handed. So is it safe to say that at the draft, your goal was to replenish the stock up at forward forward prospects that really everything equal forward, specifically maybe center since you drafted four of them was the way you wanted to go? Well, I would say not, not necessarily like, you know, Chris, they put together the, the list of players. Um, you know, we, we know we have the eighth pick and we put together the list accordingly um, who they think the best prospects are in that spot. And, and when we picked eight, the highest player on our list happened to be a centerman. So we took them. <laughs> <laughs> if it was a goalie, we might've taken him, you know, like, uh, Try not to overthink it. And, and, and that's where we had it. Like, uh, I guess you're, you know, you're like, we do need, we do need a centerman or, you know, we drafted a few of them. Um, but again, uh, you know, we look at it in, in each of the rounds, uh, um, you know, who, who, who do we really want at that pick? And it gets a little, with each round, as you go along, it, uh, the, the lines are blurred a little bit and you're, you got all these players from all over the, the, the world really. And, and you can really pick any one of them, but uh, so we may go a little bit more positional later in the draft, but up at the top uh, again, um, you know, we had Marco right there uh, and that was the top player on the list with that pick. And um, you know, uh, had one of the guys, uh, I'm not going to tell you exactly where we had him, but if uh, somebody ahead of him was a different position, we probably would have had to go that way. All right. One final question. And some of the best hockey I've ever seen, believe it or not, 
was watching practice sessions of the teams that you played on because there was competition for roster spots uh, for some of the players. I'm kind of curious, uh, how important is it to have competition for jobs within the team? How much better does that make each player knowing that, you know, they have to bring it every day? Yeah. Well, um, I just think the level of the level of practice, the level of intensity, the work ethic, like the, I, I find the top players like they're like, Nicholas Lidstrom showed up every day. Chris Chelios, they showed up every day. They worked hard. They were really good on the ice. Uh, Igor Larionov, uh, Pavel, all these guys were really hard workers. They're very professional. And they just elevated the uh, uh, the atmosphere, uh, the, the everything about it. So, um, you know, uh, the more good players we can have, um, guys are naturally competitive. They look around, they want to, they see a guy doing something well, they're going to tr try and outperform them, you know? And I think guys enjoy competition. I think they like being pushed. Um, and so I, I think it's overall, it's a good thing. I think you'll see, uh, I think you know, again, the group that we have here, I think for the most part, I think they're all pretty driven guys. They're motivated and what they're going to have to do is, uh, is, is really perform and produce. And what it does do is, you know, there's some nights where you're, it's a bit of a grind and you just kind of, you know, you, you've got to figure out a way to, to play well because it's you know, with more good players, the coach has different options to put you, a, put a player in a situation or play other guys more. You're just not going to, you're not going to play, you know, X amount of minutes and in, in all these situations, just because the coach looks down the bench and doesn't have anybody to put out there or doesn't, doesn't feel confident putting anybody out there. I think, you know, I think with the group that we have, they'll, Derek will have a few more options when he looks down the bench in any situation. Great. Thank you, Steve. Appreciate it. No problem. All right. Those are all the questions we had. Steve, thanks so much for the time today. Thanks everyone for joining us. Yeah. Appreciate everybody taking some time. Thank you.